Manifold pressure is the pressure of the engine's intake manifold, and this pressure is measured using a gauge. The manifold pressure gauge measures suction in terms of absolute pressure when the engine is on and sucking in air for combustion. This gauge tells you how much air is present for the engine to use. There are three factors affecting manifold pressure. The first is ambient air pressure, and this determines how much air the engine can use. The second is throttle position, and this is proportional to your manifold pressure. And then you have RPM, which is inversely proportional to manifold pressure, but this rule changes slightly in supercharged engines. In normally aspirated engines, manifold pressure won't exceed ambient air pressure. But with superchargers, they make manifold pressure exceed the ambient air pressure because they compress air and force more of it into the same volume. This provides more power, especially at high altitude where air density is low. Let's see how manifold pressure works. To start with, the engine is off and we're at sea level, yet the manifold pressure is still having a reading. So we can see that having the engine off measures ambient air pressure. Now I've taken the aircraft up to 5,500 metres and the engine is off. Because the manifold pressure gauge is measuring ambient air pressure, you can see how the air pressure has fallen with altitude. This means that there is less air available to combust, which will lead to a lower overall power. Now bringing the aircraft back down to sea level, I'll start the engine and have it at idle throttle and we'll watch what happens to the manifold pressure. Notice that the manifold pressure falls down to nearly zero. The gauge is showing a highly negative pressure at the intake manifold. This occurs because the pistons are trying to suck in air for combustion, but the idle throttle is blocking most of the air from getting through. This suction against resistance is what makes the manifold pressure fall. Another way to think of this is imagine what happens when you stick your hand on the end of a vacuum cleaner. You feel the suction on your hand increase and the pressure inside the vacuum tube will drop, just like this example. The engine is basically starving for air at idle throttle. Now we're airborne and flying, but I'm still at idle throttle. Now as I start increasing throttle, the manifold pressure starts climbing from its negative pressure up towards the ambient air pressure. Because at this RPM, the pistons have a very high suction, so they're sucking in more and more air as I increase the throttle. If this was a normally aspirated engine, the manifold pressure would stop here at full throttle because this is the ambient air pressure at sea level. However, this engine is supercharged, so we can compress the air coming in. Compressed air takes up less volume, so you can actually fit more of it in the same volume. With more air coming in, you alter the mixture to add more fuel, and this gives you more power. Lastly, we'll look at how the RPM affects manifold pressure. The amount of suction is determined by how fast the pistons move up and down, which we call RPM. As RPM increases, suction increases and manifold pressure drops. Supercharged engines compensate for this drop because they keep compressing the air as it's brought in. But eventually, the RPM and suction can get so high that the supercharger can't compensate for the drop anymore and manifold pressure will fall. So now we decrease the RPM, suction decreases and manifold pressure rises.